All right, so today I'm just going to take a little bit of damage here really, really fast. Uh, we're going to be there. There we go. Cool. We're going to make it so that our inventory can actually affect things in the world. Now, this is kind of a janky way to do it for now, but next time we'll actually integrate this inventory panel a bit more thoroughly. Uh, I'm just going to turn the inventory panel on, and currently I have a bunch of different items. So I have the soldier sword, I have a bow, I have my uh, magic potion and the health potion. I just took some damage, so you can see that there's one and a half hearts. So I'm going to use that potion, and there we go. We healed up our hearts. So we're going to be going through how to connect this use button to something in the world that's going to make it actually affect the character. So let's, uh, let's dive right in. Okay, welcome back. So what we're going to be doing today, first off, is we're going to make a few more items so that we have more than just the one thing in our inventory here. And then we're going to talk about how we can connect this use button by using a Unity event to something that's actually going to be used in the scene. So what I want to do here first is I want to go to my scriptable objects. I want to take a look at my inventory stuff. And in here, I'm going to create a few new items. So I'm going to go to um, inventory items, and I'm going to call this one a the red health potion. And I'm going to make another one, so I'll just duplicate this. I'm going to call this a green health potion. I already have a reference for the soldier sword, so I'm going to make another one, which is going to be for... I don't know, we'll call it the bow. All right, now I made some art assets in a sprite super fast. Um, they're just 16 by 16 art assets for the sword and then for red and green potions. I'll put a link to those in the description, but I'm just going to really quickly import them from my desktop into my scene. So if I go to my desktop here, I'm gonna grab those three. My desktop is a bit of a mess. I usually like it cleaner than this. We'll pull those in. All right, now going back to my scriptable objects, my inventory stuff. Um, let's go to the green health potion first. So for my art on that, I'm gonna grab the, I don't want the magic bottle, I want the green bottle because this is to represent like the, the potion you might get from the witches in uh, Legend of Zelda. And so this is going to be a, we'll call this a large magic potion. And item description, it smells really bad, but maybe that's good, question mark. Uh, this is usable. And now let's go back to inventory stuff, um, red health potion. This is going to get from my art, red potion bottle. I'm gonna call this a large health potion. Uh, item description is gonna be, uh, it feels warm in your hand. I wonder what it does, question mark. Uh, we'll say that we're holding one and that this is usable. All right. Back to my inventory, uh, my soldier sword. I'm gonna change this to not be usable, but be unique. And in the art, I'm gonna give it that hero sword that I made, so it's no longer the arrow. And then in my inventory, I'm gonna go to my bow, and this is gonna be, um, and we'll call this the hero bow. My item description is made from a single piece of wood and strung with a, we'll call it a piece of wood and tightly strung. And then for the sprite on this, I have a bow sprite from a previous episode in the tutorial that I'm just gonna use and I'm gonna call it unique but not usable. All right, cool. Now. I have to go to my player inventory, and I want to make sure that my player inventory has not just the soldier sword, but I'm going to give it four items. Uh, by default in a list, when you 
add new stuff, it just duplicates whatever the previous one was. So we're gonna do bow, green health potion, and red health potion. So now if I hit play, I should see those come up as four items in my inventory. So there we go. Sword, can't use, bow, can't use, can use green potion, can use red potion. So there we go. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to create an object that has a script that I want to use um, in order to make this do what it needs to do. Now, this can be attached to anything. It doesn't need to be attached to anything that's currently in the scene. So I'm going to make it be uh, part of my prefabs. So in my prefab folder, I'm going to make a new prefab, or a new folder, sorry. And I'm going to call this, um, let's call this inventory reactions. And this is going to hold just items that have reactions to when that use button is pressed in the inventory. In my scripts, I'm going to open up my inventory. I'm going to create a new script for, so a new C-sharp script. I'm going to call this a health reaction, which is going to be for that health potion. I'm going to create another C-sharp script, which I'm going to call a magic reaction. Um, there we go. Reaction. Which is going to be the reaction of the magic. So I'm going to open these up in Visual Studio, which I don't have open, so it's going to take a hot minute for that to come up. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. Okay, so what the magic reaction is going to do is it's going to uh, find the player's magic value, increase that, and then send up a signal. So what I want to do is I want to make a reference to the player's magic value, and that's going to be a public float value, and I'm going to call that player magic and a public signal. I know if you're using Unity 2019 already, you can't use signal anymore because that's now a reserved keyword. So if you need to, you can just rename all your signal scripts. I try not to change my Unity version when I'm in the middle of a project. In fact, that's part of the reason why I switched to using Unity Hub so that I can use the newer versions of Unity but still have the older version installed to use on projects that I want to keep using whatever version I was using with it. So uh, if you upgraded your Unity, then uh, all you have to do is change the name of your signal script. Call it like pulse or message or whatever you want to call it. So this is going to be signal. Um, I want to call this the magic signal. Now, I don't need a start or an update method because this is going to exist on an object that is only in the prefabs. So I'm going to create a new, we'll call it public. Well, I can actually probably just use the same. Yeah, I'm going to call this public void use. Oh, no, I can't. Okay, that's all right. So uh, this is going to require an integer value. So this is going to be int amount to increase. And then when we call this, we're going to do player magic plus equals amount to increase. And then we're going to raise that signal. Oh, it's not just player magic, it's player magic dot runtime value. And then magic signal dot raise. So we're raising the signal to say that the magic has changed in the UI should reflect that. So here's the magic reaction. The health reaction is going to be almost exactly the same. So I'm just going to grab all of this, copy, and I'm going to paste it in here. Except instead of being player magic, it's going to be player health. And instead of being magic signal, it's going to be health signal. I'm still going to use amount to increase, and then this is going to be player health. And this is going to be health signal. So I'm going to save all of those. I'm going to go back into Unity here. Now on the prefabs, those inventory reactions that I made, um, I'm going to create a new game object in here. As soon as Unity's caught up to me, I'm too impatient. So I want to create just a new 
Uh, oh, I guess I have to do it from the scene. Interesting. Uh, so in my scene, I'm just going to right click. I'm going to choose Create Empty. And I'm just going to immediately drag this game object into my prefabs and then delete it from the scene because I don't need it in there. And I'm going to call this object Health Reaction. And I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control D to call this one Magic Reaction. Now I'm going to open up the Health Reaction prefab. Again, in Unity 2019, it's slightly different. And I'm going to add a component to this. And the component I'm going to add is the Health Reaction script. So it needs to know where the player's information is. So I'm going to jump to my scriptable objects here. Scriptable objects, I want my player stuff. Let's go to player stuff. I'm really bad at coming up with names for stuff. So uh, player health and then the health signal is in signals, I think. Yep. There we go. Um, all right, cool. Now I'm going to go back. And if I go now to my inventory scriptable item, I can now choose the red health potion from my prefabs. I'm going to choose my inventory reactions. So I'm going to add a new reaction to this by pressing that plus button. Health reaction is going to be the object. And the function I'm going to get is from health reaction, use, and then this requires an integer value. So I'm going to say the integer value is 5. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, green health potion. I guess I should have called it green magic potion. I'm going to add a new event. Go back up here in my prefabs to my inventory reactions. Magic reaction is the object. Oops, magic reaction did not get its script. Okay, and then this needs to have player stuff. Did I not? Oh, for some reason I put magic in its own folder. I do weird things sometimes. Player magic, and then. Um, where did I put the magic signal? Decrease magic, got magic. I guess it's the got magic. Interesting. All right, so you're in there. That's weird I did it like that. I don't know. This tutorial's been going on for so long that I change the way I do stuff. Um, so yeah, that's weird. So back to my scriptable objects. Um, doo -doo -doo. Inventory stuff, green potion, then I want to look at my prefabs, inventory reactions, magic reaction. For magic reaction, I want to do use, and I'm going to do 10. All right, now, what I'm going to do here is a super janky way to set this up. Uh, but I'll talk about how you can make it better. I'm going to start with my inventory panel off so that I can see my player. And I'm going to hit play so that you can see that this is actually going to work the way we want it to, for the most part. All right, so I forget. I must not have my bow yet. So I'm going to go have my player go get the bow. And if you're watching this just for the inventory stuff, you can do whatever you need to do in order to check to see if stuff is working in your game. All right, so it's a bow. So I'm going to use up all my magic, just firing arrows. Now, uh, again, this is a janky way to do this. I'm just going to turn on the inventory screen. I'm going to click on this. It smells really bad. Maybe that's good. I'm going to click Use. Uh-oh. Did I not hook that up right? So let's see what I did wrong here. Let's turn on our inventory panel. Um, use button, Use button, Current Item. Use button pressed. So let's go to our inventory manager here really quickly. And current item, current item dot use. We're setting the current item, right? Current item equals new item description. Use button set active, current item dot use. And then in our item, 
So if I go to my prefabs, inventory UI, inventory slot, I want to look at that. Clicked on this item. Doo -doo -doo. Set up description and button this item. So it should know all that item stuff. Huh. I'll be right back. Okay, so that's what the issue is. The problem with the magic item is the way that I have my actual magic system programmed. So we're going to do it with the health item instead, just to show you that it's going to work the way I expect it to. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to do the janky turning off the inventory. We'll cover how to make it work the way you want it to next time. I'm going to go find an enemy, take a little bit of damage, and then run away. I got a great big scaredy cat. All right, cool. So we've taken our damage. We've ran away. Uh, I'm going to go into my inventory panel. I'm going to turn that back on. I'm going to choose the health item, and I'm going to use it. And there you go. Now, I didn't decrease the number of them that are currently in the inventory, though. And we're going to be covering that next time uh, so that when you use, it actually uses some of these up. But uh, yeah, we've, we now have it so that our inventory system is reacting with something in the world. And what I think is really interesting about this is I'm not using an object that's actually in the scene. I'm using a prefab object. So long as it has the script attached to it that you want to have attached to it, the object doesn't have to be in that room, which I think is really interesting. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I'm posting videos and join my Discord. Um, I've been feeling a little bit under the weather lately, which is why this video is a little bit later than I wanted it to be, but um, I'm going to try to get you know back on track. So hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. And yeah, thanks.